and Julia Sondu, showing you where development is happening. Please come and join us. Russia angers Guinea's junta after government dissolved. Guinea's military junta has protested to Russia's ambassador after his embassy reportedly warned of possible unrest in the capital, Conakry. The warning was issued after junta leader Colonel Mamadi Doumboya dissolved the government on Monday and ordered the closure of all borders. Ambassador Alexei Popov apologized to the junta for what he called a misunderstanding, Guinean media reported. Colonel Doumboya took power in a 2021 coup. He dissolved his government on Monday without offering any explanation. He also ordered the seizure of the passports of sacked ministers and the freezing of their bank accounts. Guinean media reported that Colonel Doumboya's decision led to the Russian embassy in Guinea advising Russian nationals to be vigilant as there could be unrest in the West African state's capital, Conakry. The junta reacted angrily, with an official in its foreign ministry summoning Mr. Popov to a meeting. I explained that it was a misunderstanding, a false translation of what was published. The announcement was published only in Russian for Russian citizens, Mr. Popov was quoted as saying by Guinea's state-owned television and radio. The junta accepted the apology, while Mr. Popov said the incident would not affect relations between the two nations. Guinea is one of several former French colonies in West Africa to be hit by coups in recent years. The juntas, which seized power in Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso have pivoted toward Russia, while being hostile towards France and the West African regional bloc, ECOWAS. However, Colonel Doumboya has tried to maintain good relations with all sides. He has promised to hold elections to restore democratic rule by the end of 2024. The junta banned all demonstrations in 2022 and has detained several opposition leaders and members of civil society groups. Colonel Doumboya overthrew President Alpha Conde in September 2021, saying the army had little choice but to seize power because of rampant corruption, disregard for human rights and economic mismanagement. Mr. Conde was Guinea's first democratically elected president, taking office in 2010 following the end of military rule. He was re-elected in 2015, but faced protests four years later when he changed the constitution to run for a third term. Russian Federation Relations Diplomatic Ties On 31 December 1991, Guinea-Bissau recognized the Russian Federation as the successor state of the Soviet Union, after the latter's dissolution. Guinea-Bissau has an embassy in Moscow, and Russia has an embassy in Bissau. Russian citizens and embassy staff were evacuated from Guinea-Bissau in 1998 due to fighting between government and rebel forces. Political Ties In August 2001, Russia forgave 80% of Guinea-Bissau's debt, which was reported to be valued at 178 million United States dollars. On the 5th of September 2021, President of Guinea Alpha Conde was captured by the country's armed forces in a coup d'etat after gunfire in the capital, Conakry. Special Forces Commander Mamadi Doumboya released a broadcast on state television announcing the dissolution of the constitution and government. After several decades of authoritarian rule in Guinea, Conde was the country's first democratically elected leader. During his time in office, Guinea used its rich natural resources to improve the economy, but the bulk of the country's population has not felt its effects. In 2020, Conde changed the constitution by referendum to allow himself to secure a third term, a controversial change which spurred the 2019-2020 Guinean protests. During the last year of the second term and his third term, Conde cracked down on protests and on opposition candidates, some of which did in prison, while the government struggled to contain price increases in basic commodities. In August 2021, in an attempt to balance the budget, Guinea announced tax hikes, slashed spending on the police and the military, and increased funding for the office of the President and National Assembly. The coup began on the morning of 5 September, when the Republic of Guinea armed forces surrounded Sekhau Torea Presidential Palace and cordoned off the wider government district. 
After a shootout with pro-government forces, the mutineers, who appear to be led by Doom Boyer, took Conde hostage, announced the dissolution of the government and its institutions, annulled the constitution, and sealed off the borders. While local politicians have not explicitly opposed or supported the coup, the takeover was met with almost universal disapproval of foreign countries, which have called for the coup to stop, for the prisoners to be released and for constitutional order to return. On the 1st of October 2021, Mamadi Doumboya was sworn in as the interim president. From the country's independence from France in 1958 until 2010, Guinea was ruled by autocratic regimes including decades of corrupt rule. In 2008, a military coup was instigated shortly after of Lansana Conte. The military stepped down in 2010. Alpha Conde, the first president to be peacefully and democratically elected to the office of President of Guinea, started governing the country in 2010, and was re-elected in 2015. The country had a two-term presidential limit, but the 2020 constitutional referendum included a provision extending the length of terms and allowed Conde to reset his term limit and seek two more terms. The move had been controversial and sparked massive protests before and after the referendum, which were brutally repressed, between October 2019 and March 2020. After the constitutional amendment was approved, Conde won the 2020 presidential election and thus a third term in office. This was again followed by protests against the president, with opposition candidates accusing Conde of ballot stuffing. Protests continued throughout the year, and were harshly repressed by security forces. France distanced itself from Conde following the 2020 election, leaving China, Egypt, Russia and Turkey foremost among the few powerful countries which continued to back the president. This happened as fellow West African and Central African countries have experienced democratic backsliding. Chad went through its own military takeover in April 2021. Mali had two such overthrows within a year, in August 2020 and May 2021, while Ivory Coast elected a president for a third term amid considerable controversy and allegations of fraud. Starting from the presidential election, opposition politicians, who were contesting the legitimacy of Conde's mandate, were repressed. This is the end of our program today. See you on Intervlog same time tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you for watching Intervlog. Thank you.